Hey boys and girls, Ken Smith, KenSmithFishing.com. Uh, beautiful world headquarters, Zavala, Texas, here in the boat barn. A little warm out here today, end of July 2018. So the much anticipated video, we got on the water today with Albert Collins, and Albert helped me convince Glenn Freeman to come join us. Now, this was really interesting, and I'll give you some background on both these guys as we start the video. These guys know each other pretty well. They had never been in the boat together. So what you're gonna see is, and, and by the way, I'm gonna give this to you basically in the raw footage I shot it in. Usually when I shoot one of these videos, for every hour of video, I'll get 15 minutes, 10 minutes worth of video. I don't know how many hours of video I shot today, but every bit of it was interesting because you're gonna see as the video starts, they're a little bit guarded and they're, you know, we're kind of feeling our way around each other. And uh, you know, there's, uh, we don't talk a ton, but as the day goes, it gets more and more interesting, and they start listening to each other, and it was a really, really fun day. So to a large degree, and I'm going to break this down into multiple videos. I'm not going to try to put up a, an hour and a half long video on YouTube. So I'm going to break these down in 10 to 15 minute sections. I'll post them over the next couple of weeks. It's, it's fascinating. I, I had a ball. I was on the water today for four or five hours on Rayburn and didn't fish. I just asked questions and listened and learned and, uh, and you guys had great questions and if that question, their answer caused me to think of another question, I just went down that rabbit hole with them. So uh, enjoy this. I, I think this is fascinating. I absolutely want to do this with some more guys. I've already got guys in mind and I think honestly uh, Albert and, uh, and Glenn would be open to do this again. So. Uh, if this causes you to have more questions, ask them to me in the comments, and, and we'll keep getting answers to these questions. So this was a ton of fun. It'll be multiple videos. At this point, I don't even know how many it'll be, but I'll get them all posted over the next few weeks. Uh, and again, these get better as the day goes on. So I hope you enjoy this first one. And uh, this is good stuff. This is I learned a lot today. And, uh, it's interesting to hear their outlook and the differences they think about Rayburn and, and Toledo and, and structured fishing and the history of fishing and guys we've known for years. And so it was a great day. So uh, sit back, enjoy, close your door so your boss doesn't know you're watching this on the work computer and uh, enjoy some fishing with uh, Albert Collins and, and Glenn Freeman here on Sam Rayburn in July 2018. Thanks guys. Good morning guys, there's an argument here going on between our two guests this morning about what makes for a crankbait. So, welcome to Sam Rayburn, I'm going to get out of the way while these guys get rigged. Uh, this was as promised uh, a couple of weeks ago in the boat today, we're, we're going to talk about structure fishing. And in the boat today, as you see in the front up there, he with no hat, Albert Collins. And then we also brought over from Toledo Bend to give us a real good, interesting thought on the difference between Rayburn and Toledo, Glenn Freeman. Now, I know we've got guys from all over the country uh, viewing. Anybody in East Texas knows who both these guys are. But just in case you don't, I'm going to embarrass both of them a little bit. So Glenn, Glenn's from Zawali, Louisiana. By the way, Glenn, you know there was a big uh, Finding Bigfoot episode done in Zawali, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Every day. Oh, they, are they hunting Bigfoot over there every day? So we may get into whether Glenn believes in Bigfoot or not here in a minute. So I looked up his FLW statistics. So follow these statistics. Glenn, you fished 110 events in your FLW career. You have 33 top 10s. That's 10% of your tournaments. All right, but that ain't even interesting. You've got 11 wins, one on Rayburn, and one Costa on Toledo. Right. But then you got nine FLW wins on Toledo Bend. So right. you've won 10 times over there. How many events do you think you fished to win 10 times? I counted them. How many? You have fished since 1991, 25 events over there, and you've won 10 of them. You've won 40% of the events you fished on Toledo Bend. That's pretty good. Now, I didn't count the Costas, but you've won nine of the 25 BFLs. Right. That's ridiculous. That ain't fair. Uh, now, since so I wanted to get a guy who really can't catch him with us, too. We brought Albert Collins. Albert has not fished as many FLW events, only 31. He's got two wins, 
He also finishes in the top 10 30% of the time. By the way, that's, that's really, really good. I looked because then I thought, well, how often do I finish in the top 10? I'm, I'm one out of every five. You guys are both one out of every three. But then Albert also, Albert, you fish the FL, or the BASS side a lot, right? Uh, yeah, some. I fish a lot of the Bass Nation. That, that's what I'm talking about. So get this. That guy has won the Bass Nation twice. You've been to the Classic twice. No, actually I won the Bass Nation once. What was the other one? It was the Bassmaster Weekend Series. So that's not the same thing. Okay. But you've been to the Classic twice that way. Yeah. Right. What I like about this is neither one of these guys are what I would call touring pros, right? Albert just fishes here on Rayburn for a living, and Glenn is, I get a lot of questions, who should I take out for a guide? That guy right there. Now I'll tell you, he don't, he, he told me this morning, he fishes two or three days a week, and that's what he wants to fish, but I bet if you call him and really ask nice, he might take you fishing as well. He's hunting something down here. All right, so that's who we got in the boat with us. We've got a very big list of questions. All you guys have subscribed or, or sent to me. So we will start going through these questions as these guys fish. And uh, I think we're going to have a great day and we're all going to learn a whole bunch. So here we go, guys. All right, so uh, we, it is right off the bat. It'll just give you a sense. It's uh, end of July. We're on Sam Rayburn. Lake's what, Albert, a foot or two low? About two and a half. Okay, so two and a half feet low. Um, and our, our purpose today, by the way, is to give guys a, a, an offshore fishing lesson. And part of that's a little bit out of frustration. I'll be real honest uh, in talking with these guys. Uh, it's gotten, uh, I want to be careful how I say this. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. But it's gotten to the point where, uh, and, and we have a lot of young folks fishing, and they don't all do it this way, but there are some folks who... Uh, spend as much time looking for fishermen as they do looking for fish. And I think that's because there's not a lot of great lessons out there from guys who do this a ton about how to find offshore fish. And these two guys have told us they're going to help us do that. So we have run down. We're, we're basically mid-lake. Sorry about the boat noise in the background. Albert, tell me what you ran out here and what you were thinking, what we pulled out here looking for. Well, what we really what we're trying to do is just you know, look at a bunch of water that I don't typically spend a lot of time looking at just to uh, just to try to find some new stuff because you, you, you constantly are trying to, you know, find new areas, new stuff, new places that you can catch fish on. And uh, to go back to the little deal that you was talking about a while ago about people, you know, looking, watching for people. And I hear this all the time when I say something about guys coming in and and driving up to you and marking you on the lake. Uh, the first thing I hear is people say, well, I can fish anywhere on that lake I want to fish. And I'm not by any means saying you can't fish anywhere on this lake you want to fish. The whole point today is to try to make people understand that we work hard. We spend a lot of money. We put in a lot of hours to try to find a place to fish. And to me, Whenever you put in 100 hours to find a spot and three or four hundred dollars worth of gas and stuff like that to have somebody just drive up to you and mark you, you know, that's just not right. Uh, you can fish anywhere on this lake you want to fish. Just go find your own fish. Don't find something because you see somebody else sitting on it. Well, and truth be told, once a, once a spot is found, it's kind of done, right? I mean, it, it's the old saying, teach a man to fish or, you know, give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, teach a man to fish. Right. <laughs> Right. So, generally, once one of those spots is found, it's pretty much toast. Yeah, I mean, they'll fish it to death, and, you know. First thing you know, instead of having one or two people fish it, you got a boat on it 24-7. So, Al Albert actually made the comment this morning as we were running down the lake. He said, so, Albert, would, is there a possibility this boat's missing a skeg right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... I found one of the stumps the other day. <laughs> so Albert lives in Nacogdoches, which obviously is way closer to, let's say, Marion's Ferry on the north end of the lake than it is the dam. Albert, where'd you lose that skeg? <laughs> down by the dam. <laughs> <laughs> and, and why were you down there? Looking for fish. Right. I mean, I was trying to find something else. I, you know, it's, everything's getting so pressured, I got to try to get in areas where there's not so many people and, and uh, get on some new stuff. So... 
That immediately makes me think of a guy, and Glenn, you'll know this guy, named Mike Metcalf. Oh, yeah. and, and so Mike took all of our money many years ago, quite a bit, on Toledo Bend, and quite a bit over here, too. And I remember his comment one time, because there was many, many years that there were no marker buoys on Toledo Bend. That's right. Right? And one of the things he said was, once the lake got marked, it got where he, w he actually caught more fish staying down south. Same reason. What Albert said earlier was, every spot, he used to be able to fish milk runs on the north end of the lake. Point here, creek swing there, brush pile there. But now, you, if he tries to run eight milk spots, he might get to fish one or two. That's right. That's it. Because there's so many folks on the lake. Yeah, yeah and, and, and the thing is, you know, the, the guys that legitimately find it, I mean, you kind of know the guys that get out and look, you see them. You know, you know, okay, I see so-and-so out there, and he's idle, he's grafting, he's fishing, he's looking, he's finding this fish. Right. You know, and those guys, they, they find those spots, and but they're not the ones that you have as big a problem with because they're going to fish them kind of like you do. You know, they're going to be a little resor resourceful with them because uh, they know that, you know, they're limited spots. Right. And the good spots are very limited. But... So let's talk about that for a second. If you, either one of you, I'll, let's, I'm going to ask each of you separately. I, so you're still looking for new fish on Rayburn. Oh yeah. It, how many, if, if you, how, to find a good spot, do you think it'd take you a day, two days, three days? A good spot that'll consistently put out fish, I, I find maybe three a year. Three a year? Yeah. Same question, Glenn. I'd say probably you might find one fishing four, five, six months looking for that one spot. Right. You'll find some spots and the fish will be there and then they'll be gone. So that's not the kind of spot you want. But I, I'm, I'm gonna, uh, two or three a year, if, if you get that. If that, yeah, if, if that. If you get that, if you get lucky. Uh, it's, it's just gotten real bad. Going back to, to Mike Metcalf, he had no peace on the water. He couldn't go out and fish without people just following him, watching him. No well, if he didn't wear that awful looking hat all the time, it wouldn't have been so easy to find him. <laughs> yeah, <maybe so. laughs> so by the way, Mike wore a big giant trucker's hat always, uh, and he always fished his life jacket on too, right? That's right. That's so he, he was pretty easy to spot out there. Yeah. But it's hard, it's just real hard. He spent hours and days, and, and some spots come in two or three, four years to find that one spot. That one spot. All right, so you won the last BFL on Toledo. Right. 26? 20, uh, 24. 24 pounds. 70, right, 25 pounds. Yeah. All right, and, and as I recall, that's post-spawn. Right. All right, talk to me about not where that spot is. Talk to me about that spot, how you found it, what you were thinking. Well, at, at that particular time, Usually you have some deep fish going out, but they weren't out. Okay. So I concentrate on shallow water. But I concentrate on shallow water leading to the deep water. That was what the important deal was. And I actually caught the fish, and people don't believe this, but I was sitting in five foot throwing to two and three foot of water. And that's how I caught those fish. Caught them on a jig. But the main thing was it was just the right setup. They could leave there and go to their deep water whenever they get ready. Real All right, quick. so I like this because I get to ask the question that other people would ask, and I can act like I knew the answer. <laughs> <laughs> so when you say there was deep water, how far away? About two cast. Okay, so yeah. close. Real close. Real close. And how did you find those fish? Idling and looking and fishing. So how do you find fish in five and three feet of water idling? Well, first of all, you're looking for signs. You're looking for shad movement. And, and I, that's what I saw. And it was right up, you know, not far off of the, the bank line, actually. I, I was fishing, I could throw with some timber. And once you find a concentration of shad that time of the year, it's a good place to fish. Uh, I was doing the same thing. I, I, I was seeing the shad spawn on the, exactly. on the bushes and stuff in the areas and just start fishing those areas. Exactly. Of course, I didn't catch what Glenn caught, but yeah, I was catching fish. Yeah. Me on Toledo Bend, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> nice. 
So when you went that shallow, uh, you're throwing a jig. Right. Do you drop down to a lighter jig? Or you still throwing a heavy jig? No, I was using a three quarter ounce jig. Not screwing around. That's right. If, if those fish want to eat, they're going to eat. I mean, a three quarter ounce, that's, that's really nothing. You know, they'll, they'll track it down. So for those who don't know, Glenn, so Glenn lives on the north end of what I would call the north end. It's really not the north end. It's probably even mid lakey, but yeah. uh, in the in the one fifteen, uh, uh, not twelve fifteen area 1215. on Toledo Bend. You spend most of your time up there, right? Most of it, I do fish further south. Uh, and what we were talking about earlier, the pressure's gotten so bad up there that you know I'm having to fish further south. So you're so the pressure at twelve fifteen is pushing you south. Interesting. So this year, I'm just curious, on Toledo, is there grass that far north? Of course, I'm, I'm, I never look for grass. Is that a function of being a guide? Because I know it's harder for most folks to fish grass that it's don't fish it. It's the style. I mean, you, yeah, that's right. Glenn's a lot like me. I mean, everybody asks me, how's grass on Rayburn? Well, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I, I'm out here deep. I'm structure fishing and, and fishing creek channels and drop-offs and swings and you know hard spots and stuff like that. And Glenn's kind of the same. You same know, thing. I'm, I'm looking for structure and, and, and by structure uh, I'm not talking about a tree or a rock or a brush pile. Structure is actually a contour or change of the bottom. Okay, right. And just like deep water you got deep water structure and you got shallow water structure. It's, it's, it's one and the same. It's just a different depth and everything. And that's what I look for. I, I'm not looking for grass. I'm not looking for trees. I'm not looking for any of that stuff. Just bottom contour. So I ask you the question when we got in the boat because one of our viewers asked your thoughts on Buck Perry. Uh, he was something else. Uh, so for those who don't know who Buck Perry was. Buck Perry was the father of grandfather of deep water structure fishing and he actually gave the name structure to the bottom contour. Uh, yeah I asked that because it sounded like you were quoting him a little bit there. Yeah he, he he found deep water fish every place he went he did not have electronics. He actually used a little spoon plug that could tell him the depth of everything and he knew where those fish were laying on you know to the to each part each each form of structure and everything and you could put them on anybody of water and he could find a deep water structure fish big fish too but you learn that by baiting in the water time on the water right. fishing you, you, you know you just it's basically the same thing we just got all electronics now that show us where them drop-offs are and it's easier to kind of find that stuff in a quicker manner than what it was back then but exactly um, it's still basically the same thing. We graft and we look, but 90% of what I find is because I got a bait in the water. Hold that thought. I'm going to pause.